Hello, I'm uh, Luca Ferrezin, one of the cardiologists at the RALF, and uh, I'm here to talk about uh, another topic that I um, find extremely interesting, which is uh, falling and fainting. I use the words falling and fainting instead, instead of the word collapse, because uh, um, although collapse is used in a sort of general um, discussions in veterinary medicine, collapse actually applies only to uh, structures. So we can talk about collapse of a bridge, of a building, or collapse of uh, an airway, or collapse of, uh, of vessels. So when it comes to uh, dogs and cats that fall and perhaps lose consciousness, the right terminology should be falling and fainting. And the reason is that we, until we uh, perform uh, advanced investigations, we can't really tell whether we are dealing with a patient that is falling because of a, a lack of a cerebral perfusion, which we call a syncope or fainting, and um, or because um, of uh, an abnormal electrical activity of the of the brain, which is more uh, commonly known as uh, seizures, um, or sometimes is uh, the falling is caused by uh, weakness or lethargy and uh, exhaustion. So these are all uh, possibilities that can be kept in the differential diagnosis. And then obviously we got pain and muscle cramps. They can also cause uh, falling and fainting in uh, sorry falling but non fainting in uh, in these patients. So um, I will focus initially on uh, the importance of uh, uh, fainting or a syncope, which is uh, an unprovoked, unexpected and transient condition, which is always followed by a spontaneous recovery. Now, these uh, um, patients usually they just uh, fall unconscious and uh, it's very important to question their carers to find out whether these uh, um, dogs and cats are responsive during the recumbency and uh, also it's important to know how long they're recumbent for because uh, with um, syncope fainting the, um, the, the the period of uh, of recumbency is usually limited to a few seconds maybe 10 20 seconds and the recovery is uh, equally very fast and uh, the patient acts like uh, nothing happened once fully recovered and that's a very common presentation for uh, falling and fainting uh, cats and dogs. And uh, when they are recumbent, however, the, um, these patients may appear like dead. And uh, the reason is that very often they don't have a cardiac output, they don't have a heartbeat, they don't breathe, and therefore it's an extremely stressful um, experience for uh, the care, especially when it happens for the first time. They don't expect it, and so it's almost uh, um, uh, inevitable for these uh, carers to not to remember clearly what happened during that event. But um, it is possible that for uh, following events, if the problem persists, then we can uh, perhaps instruct them to check the color of their mucomembranes or uh, palpate the chest in order to appreciate the heartbeat and uh, try to also uh, take a video recording even with a mobile phone during the, the event, which again probably will never happen in the very first instance. Now, the um, causes of uh, uh, falling and fainting are, um, are several, and uh, from a cardiovascular point of view, which is the one that we tend to investigate first, surely rhythm abnormalities are very important. So when the heart rate is uh, too fast, in uh, severe tachycardias or too slow, like in severe bradycardias, usually both extremes are sufficient to cause a critical drop in cardiac output, which is responsible for the lack of cerebral perfusion, and therefore the brain switches off for a few seconds, and because of that, they lose control of their gait, they fall on the floor, and they look like uh, uh, dead patients. But then the recovery is very rapid and spontaneous. So how do we um, investigate this, uh, this case? It can be quite challenging. And uh, I would always recommend to consider a cardiac workup before considering a neurological uh, approach. And the reason is that the cardiac workup tends to be um, non-invasive. We don't use any sedation or anesthesia. And it tends to be also uh, relatively cheaper when compared to more expensive uh, MRI or uh, electrophysiology studies. So. Um, Based on, uh, on uh, these uh, clinical findings, so very rapid and unexpected onset, uh, a very uh, brief recumbency and spontaneous recovery, we should perhaps consider initially a cardiac workup. And I would suggest starting with uh, 
in a, a cardiac ultrasound because a cardiac ultrasound will give a lot of information if performed by somebody with uh, uh, knowledge and experience, a lot of information about the cardiac structure and the cardiac function. And uh, of course, every echocardiogram should be recorded with a simultaneous ECG recording. And therefore we can have for the 20, 30 minutes of image acquisition, a continuous ECG monitoring. If nothing is uh, uh, detected during this uh, initial investigation, which is completely uh, non-invasive, it doesn't require, as I said, any, um, any general anesthesia, and very rarely we require sedation for this test, then we should perhaps consider a 24-hour ECG. 24-hour ECG is uh, more powerful than the standard ECG, which by default should be 20, 30 seconds. We tend to record that uh, uh, with digital ECG up to at least five, 10 minutes in order to catch events that are not uh, constantly present. But 24 hours will increase dramatically the diagnostic yield. However, you also need to remember that very often, and probably the majority of cases, these dogs do not faint on a daily basis. So perhaps you need to consider a 48 hour uh, recorder or a seven days recorder. But again, sometimes they just faint once a month or every two, three months, or sometimes they faint like in a battery of uh, three, four times in a day, and then they don't, and then they don't faint anymore for, uh, for several weeks. So in these situations, we got another very powerful diagnostic tool, which is called the implantable loop recorder, which is a sort of microchip that we can uh, um, implant under a light anesthesia under the skin at the level of, uh, uh, of the left side of the chest and the level of the heart. And this is a device that can record continuous ECG for up to three years. And uh, we, um, when we implant this device, we give the care a, a, a remote control. And this remote control has the capacity to save the loop of recording around the event. So if the cat or the dog faints because of this, um, because of, a, of a, a, an arrhythmia, then uh, the uh, loop that is uh, saved by pressing the button of the remote control can show us the ECG before, during, and after the event. And in this way, we can uh, uh, rule in an arrhythmia or rule out an arrhythmia. If we can rule out an arrhythmia with a, a complete and remarkable echocardiogram, then it is almost 99.9% um, .9 non-cardiac in origin. So we can then transfer the investigation to our uh, neurology friends. But if we do see, for example, a tachycardia or a bradycardia, we've got several tools to fix these problems. And certainly for bradycardia, the most successful intervention is the implantation of a pacemaker. And uh, I've got two um, cases that uh, I've seen for you, and I work in a very strict collaboration with my neurology colleagues here at Ralph. We had a case that was initially referred to neurology, which ended up being a, a cardiac patient. So we implanted a pacemaker in this dog last week. And uh, similarly, I had a dog that was referred to me for initial investigation because the care thought was fainting. And uh, the 48 hour recording didn't catch any abnormality during the uh, three events that the dog experienced during the, the monitoring. And therefore, I transferred the case to neurology and the, neurology, the neurologist made the appropriate diagnosis. So a good collaboration between disciplines and multidisciplinary approach is uh, extremely important for this uh, common problem. But as I said, it's challenging, it requires a lot of experience and, uh, and sometimes uh, advanced uh, technology. But we moved from 20 years ago where the diagnosis was reached in approximately 50% of cases to almost 100% of diagnosis with uh, these um, um, sophisticated techniques.